But the major difference, guys, is Revit will allow you to install your system in 3D. That's a major component. So when you start designing with Revit, the first thing you need to keep in mind, when we were doing CAD, we were laying out all the receptacle. Have you paid attention to the third dimension, the height? Did you guys look at the height? When it comes to Revit, I cannot emphasize enough. When you drop a receptacle, you are dropping a three-dimensional object. And you have to pay attention to the third dimension. So when you start dropping your receptacle, for example, and it doesn't show up, that's because your receptacle is not placed at the, at the right height. Luckily, all receptacles and lights, they come with a default. A project like the one that we're going to do, the commercial project, is easy, guys. It's one-story project. So when you drop a receptacle, it comes at a default of, I don't know, a foot and a half or a foot from the ground, and it sits there, and you can see it. When you have an, a multi-story building and you drop a receptacle or a light, if you're not sitting in sitting your system right, that light might not show up because it's supposed to be in this ceiling, but when you drop it, it should have been the, the ceiling above it. Can I get you guys to understand you're dealing with 3D model, okay? When you open Revit, you're going to have very, very important three things to look at. When you open it, you're going to find right on this discipline, guys, and I'll walk you for a second here, right, the views. The views are probably one of the most important things they're going to do. The views here says views, and then after, right underneath it, there's another one that says schedules, schedules um, and quantities. Um, so there's a views if you minimize it, and then there is uh, panel schedules, there are sheets, and there are families. I cannot emphasize enough that how important these are, okay? So when you come over here, you're coming first, you're going to be working in the views. They call them the views. That's like the model space, okay? That's your model space. You're working in a model space in CAD. Now, when you print, you're going to go to the sheets. That's your paper space. Okay? Can I guess get you to understand that model space is equivalent to a view and paper space is equivalent to so-called sheets. So let's go look at the sheets. This is an already designed project for you. Let's go look at the sheets. When you go under the sheets, that's what we're going to be doing tomorrow. We're going to be setting up the sheets. You guys remember how we set up the sheets in CAD, E1 through E12 for the residential project? We're going to do an E1 through E10 for the commercial project. So you go under the sheets, and setting up is so easy. If you right-click on this, can you guys see where it says new sheet? That's how we're going to start. Your start point is the sheets. You're going to go set up your sheets, and it's as easy as new sheet. I'm going to walk you tomorrow. Grab the, the 22 by 34 or 11 by 17, typically 22 by 34. Put your tile block in it, and off it goes, and call it E1. Very, very easy. So can I guys get you to understand your start point is always where sheets, okay? Now, I'm gonna, these are all the sheets they're going to have. So we have sheet one. If you click on sheet one, here's how it's going to look like. Your sheet one is going to say a commercial project. That's just text. You're going to have a nice looking picture like like this. You're going to have all the, all the drawing sheets, the title sheets of all the drawings, E1 through E12. That's also text. And then you're going to have... Um, and then you're going to have um, your title block. This is done last year. Those are the two guys that did the project. And um, so that's their, their logo. I will walk you tomorrow how to set your logo. Title block. That's your title block. You're going to set your title block tomorrow. Um, fill all this information. Michelle Cooley, Egan. Remember how now you guys did the title block for the commercial residential project. I expect you to do the same information that you did in the residential project. Fill it here. So this is your um, engineering firm, electrical contractor, um, the architects that are going to be leading it. This is the city that this project is going to be in. And the bottom here, description of any changes that got. And right at the bottom here is you're going to have the commercial project, ECDM, that's the name of the project, title sheet, and E1. These are the sheets that are going to be uh, E1, and it's called title sheet. The name of the project, the date, and who draw and who checked it, CSK is me. You guys are going to be the ones who are going to be drawing that. When are we going to do this? Tomorrow. We're going to do this. So the first thing you're going to do is set up a tile block and drop your tile block like we've done. Okay? Can you have thumbs up, Chad? We fully understand that tile block and putting it in the sheet. 
Okay, so that's our metal block, sheet one. Then you're going to go to sheet two. Sheet two has the symbols. Same tab block has symbols. This is as easy as importing the CAD file. That's the same symbols that you guys used, right? You're going to import this one and dump them right into a sheet. I'll show you how to do that tomorrow. I want you guys to expand. When you go underneath it, can you guys see where it says the drafting view? This is how Revit works. Very easy. First, you pick a sheet. Sheet. Here's a sheet. Then you drop a view on the sheet. Can I guess get you to understand that concept? You pick, pick a sheet. Here's a sheet. Can you guys see that sheet? Here's a sheet. It's called E2. The frame is the sheet. Then you drop the view on the sheet. Can you guys see that one that I'm clicking on right now? That's called the view on the sheet. Sheet, view on the sheet. That's exactly like the viewport. Remember how the viewport uh, map? We had the paper, like E3. Um, and we designed the paper, and then we put a viewport. And that viewport that you designed in CAD is equivalent to the um, the uh, the view, that viewport, equivalent, exactly equivalent to, to the view in Revit. So in order to see anything, you have to have two things. Number one, the, v, the first the sheet, so you can print the frame. Then you have to have the view. What view do I want? So, for example, if you look at the tile block, Title, uh, tile, he's underneath it. I have a 3D view. That's the view that we put. First, you create a view, then you dump it into the sheet. I have a drafting sheet. That's all the text is coming as a drafting sheet. So I have two views under one sheet. One more time. I can't emphasize enough. You have your paper. Here's a view one, and here's a view two. Can you see when you hover over them, they look like they're two different things. Karen, this is your viewport, and Derek, these are your viewports. So we have two viewports in it, equivalent to viewports in CAD. Cool? Now, can you see how you expand it? Now, look at the symbols. In the symbols, I only need one viewport. Why? Because I need to drag the sheets and put them in one viewport. Here's the drafting. Let's go to the risers. Here's all the riser. Your riser will look something like this, guys. You have a generator. I hope it's smaller than that. Um, with a transformer coming to a meter cabinet, out of the meter cabinet to an ATS, ATS, out of the ATS to the main panel, a receptacle panel, a lighting panel with some text here and some schedule. That's how your riser is going to look like. All what you're looking at are these, are guys, view sections, they call them. Here's section one. See, all these are sections, sections, all these sections, and then the rest is just drafting. They're drafting it right in there. And I'll walk you through how to use that one in, in a second. Not in a second, when we reach it. Site plan. When you go to the site plan, here's my site plan. Here's my building, the roof of the building. Here's the light. Can you guys see the light sitting right next to the building? All the lights, can you guys see it's L, type L, circuit 10, T1. Timer 1 will control it. That's how we do it. Um, yeah, parking lot lights. Here's my parking lot light. It's K9. That's a sound like interesting K9. <laughs> it's a fixture K, circuit nine, timer two is going to control it, and typical. All of them are going to be the same, the same type. K9 um, and table two. Does that make sense? Or uh, or timer two? That's how your light is going to look like. I want to bring to your attention, guys, the viewport. Here's the viewport that you're going to be working with. Can you guys see the viewport? That's where we're going to be dropping things. Repeat myself one more time. You have a sheet, you have a views. You drop views in a sheet, and then you print. How simple is that? You design the sheet. We're going to do that tomorrow. Design all this sheet. Taking a tile block that you're going to design with your new logo in Revit. We grab the same logo in Revit. Design it. Drop that sheet as E4, or in this case, e, um, what was that? E4. Yeah. And then when you put the sheet, we design it right. Then you grab a view. Slam that view right into the sheet. You got yourself a drawing. Okay, so that's how your site is going to look like when you are done. Uh, floor, floor plan light. Can you guys see here's all the lighting fixture? This happened to be fixture A, circuit one, and switch little A or um, um, what do you call this? Lowercase A. 
Here's lowercase a. So these fixtures, all of them are fixture type A, circuit one, and they're switched from a switch A. That's how we do it in CAD. There is no spaghetti. Do you see any spaghetti? Where is the spaghetti? Gone. No spaghetti, right? No connecting it. Uh, I'm going to bring to your attention here. Here's a floor plan. Uh, floor plan one, the lighting. Here's where we do it. We bring here the floor plan. The one that we'll be bringing here, the view is called floor plan. Okay, power. Here's your power. Here's all the power layout. Um, for example, there's a J-box here. Four circuits coming to the J-box. Look how simple that is. When you guys start doing it, half of the battle is to find which one the Chad wants. Here's a receptacle. Does it, doesn't that look like the receptacle that you guys installed right here? That receptacle? Right next to it is a tag. They call it a tag. We're going to start tagging. The tag says RP, receptacle panel, 39, 39. That's circuit 39 from the receptacle panel feeding this tiny little receptacle. See how easy that is? Am I the only one who's excited here today? <laughs> you're going to find, guys, it really is. When you when you get the rhythm of it, you're going to find it's easier than CAD. <laughs> CAD, you have to type next to things or you have to have attributes. Here, you tag it. You pick a tag, and the tag is when you put the receptacle then you literally go grab a tag and touch the receptacle and based on what tag you put when you touch the receptacle it writes the tag next to it rp is one tag 59 is the circuit and derek do you remember when you made a mistake in circuiting and you said can i one of you guys say can i use this one as bear chat in, instead of recircuiting you will appreciate rivet a lot made a mistake in circuiting no problem Rechange your circuits and your schedule recalculates itself and updates itself. Isn't that cool? So you don't have to go to when you say circuit four now, it's going to be circuit five. In CAD, you have to go and change it in the schedule. Here, the minute that you pick circuit change four to five, it will update the schedule for you. <laughs> That's the nice thing about Revit. Okay, floor plan system, low voltage. Here's all your low voltage equipment. Um, these are the uh, flow switches and tamper switches and glass brick and and sensors and what's not all of them are right here we throw them in uh, i think we did them in the floor plan here floor plan um i can't emphasize can you guys see that plus next to each one of them it's a uh, paper space inside it is a view this is so important to remember that if you go to the low voltage riser, here's my low voltage risers. These are coming from a drafting view that you guys want to go draft. You basically draft it. You go exactly like you drafted with Chad. With, with um, then you're going to go panel schedule. My favorite are the panel schedules. Panel schedules, when you guys are done, all what you do is just hit panel schedules and it will set all the schedules for the panels that you have. And then you drop these panel schedules. Can you guys see? You drop them right in here. <clears throat> you drop the panel schedules, and it will show all your panel schedules right into one sheet. You know, you can move them apart, move, move them aside, look at that, overlap them. Um, obviously, we don't want to do that. So, so that's your panel schedules. Moving on all the way to the last one is equipment schedules. Here's my um, relay. I don't know if you see that one. Here's my lighting schedule filled. Um, okay, here's my mechanical schedule here, and right in here, here's my relay panel schedule. This project that I'm showing you guys right here is this project. Okay, so you're going to find access to all this information because there's a lot of information. I would like you to understand it, know how to do it, have an example to do it, and get into doing it. Right? Instead of struggling, how am I going to do a, a lighting control schedule? Here's how it looks like. Go design it in CAD. I'll walk you on to design it. Schedule and build it. You know, you don't have to sit there and think, well, how? what does he want me to do with the schedule? Here's an example. So spend more time doing it than thinking, how are you going to do it? <laughs> you know what I mean? So here's your lighting control schedule. You have relay, circuit, room, and control type. That's it. Um, these are, can you guys see, they are all drafting view, and tomorrow we'll talk about drafting view one, drafting view two, and drafting view. There are two types of views. There's a view 
uh, uh, three actually, section view and view and drafting view. Drafting a view is a piece of paper here, go draft on it. Blank piece of paper. Draft on it or bring things from CAD to it. View is when, imagine looking at this from the top, looking to the bottom here. That's a view of the building, right? Floor view, looking at the floor. Section view, imagine cutting this room by half and looking at one section of it, how it's going to look like. Section view, view, and uh, and drafting view. Again, we will talk about this one, guys, a lot tomorrow, too, when we start setting up. Details, here's my details. These are not a whole not big of a detail. Here's the drafting. This is what those guys did. They just grabbed it in a drafting view, and they, can you guys see how they draw all this stuff? CAD, exactly like in CAD. And gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, this would be the end of your um, your CAD or Revit experience with it. Can you guys see how it looks like when you set it? And I'm showing you so you can see what the outcome tomorrow is. Your starting point with Revit is always the sheets. These are the drawings. These are the paper space. I know you guys just did seven, seven weeks of CAD. I wish we did more than seven weeks. But in CAD, we have paper space and model space. In Revit, we have sheets, that's equivalent to the paper space, and we have views, that's equivalent to the model space. So where do we work? We work in the model space. Where do we print? Print from the paper space. Now to, ma to make the, to bring the model space to the paper space, in CAD, we have views, view a viewport. Remember that viewport, you did multiple of them? In Revit, you have views, the same thing. You drop a view in the sheet. Drop a view in the sheet. How many views do you want? As many as you, you want, you know. You can only in CAD, though, as well as in Revit, in Revit and CAD, you only drop the same view once. Otherwise, you have to copy it and name it a different name to drop it again. Okay, so can I have thumbs up that Chad, we know that the sheets, the drawings are called E1 through E, uh, 10 and they are under sheets. Everybody understand that one? Thumbs up, Chad. We might not know how to do it, but we will learn tomorrow, but <laughs> we know where they are at least. I can't emphasize, guys. So important, when you were to print, always to go to where? Sheets. Like when you were printing yesterday for me, guys, uh, Chad, you were going to where? You were not printing it from that model space, were you? You were in the paper space. That's exactly the sheets is where we print. So that's a done project for you. Okay, so these are the sheets. Now, that's the model space, the paper space. Sheets are paper space. Now, where's the model space, Chad? Where am I supposed to work? Okay, the model space are called the views. Can you guys see views by discipline? Click on this. We're electrical. If you guys look, Revit comes default when you, when I, when you, when I set it up for you, we default to electrical because we're electrical. They're mechanical, electrical, structural, and architectural all in one big model. Now me and my fellow architects and mechanical engineers, structural engineers could be using the same model to work on the same model. Right? That's the whole idea of Revit, guys, is to use the same model, all disciplines work on it, everything is completely fully coordinated, meaning this lighting fixture is not going right through that mechanical fixture from the get-go, instead of in the field they start fighting over location. So. They call it uh, collagen detection. It, it detects the collagen. Okay. So you're going to find when you go to views, you're going to find views mechanical and views electrical. Because um, Revit MEP, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing. The MEP, the one that we use, is called Revit MEP. What's an M? M mechanical, elect E electrical, and P plumbing. They do three disciplines, or the mechanical, plumbing, and us, the electrical, using the same setup. So you're going to find a mechanical. Are we mechanical here? You're going to find the large, if you're a mechanical engineer doing your work, it's going to be right here, right? But we're not mechanical, right? So we're not going to be using this, even though those guys are using some of it. Uh, we're going to be, guys, doing electrical. So you're going to go under electrical. For electrical, Revit splits it into three uh, sections. Um, Right. The first one where it has question marks, if you make a section in the building, it will drop you a section right here under these question mark sections. Every time you have a section, I'll show you how to make a section in Revit. It drops it here. 
or a drafting view or the drafting view can you just see sections or drafting views or drop here sections or drafting views the views there are two ways of doing the views there's um for the views there's lighting and there's power so if you're doing lighting you can uh, you can have a ceiling can you just see a ceiling or you can have a floor Anybody knows why, Derek, why do you think when we're doing lighting, we need a view of the ceiling and a view of the floor? Where do you put your lights? In the ceiling. Where do you put your receptacles? Above the floor. So you, when I say floor, typically above the floor, four feet above the floor. So you need your receptacles to show on the floor, and you see your light to show on the ceiling. So they give you two views. When it comes to power, I don't know if you guys can see the power, floor plan, uh, lighting. For power, they give you only floor plan. Why do you think for floor plan for power? Most of the power equipment are where? Sitting on the floor and the receptacles are a foot or a foot and a half above the floor. So anyway, so these are the views that we're going to be using. Uh, for example, let me show you guys the power. So I'm going to go click power. Um, here's uh, floor floor power. This is equivalent to the model space that you guys are going to be working on. So when I click, if I'm doing power layout, I'm going to go right under, look what I'm going to do. I'm going to be working under views, under electrical, right? And I'm not doing lighting, so I'm going to minimize lighting. I'm doing power, floor, power, uh, floor, power. Floor, power, layout. And I go and start working on my power. So for example, here's my receptacle here. Can you guys see is my receptacle? I can move my receptacle. I I have to have a permission to do my receptacle, but you can move your receptacle, double click on this. Um, you can get a whole lot. Here's your panel that goes to it. Um, go back. I don't want to do that one. Okay, where did I go now? I went into, uh, don't want to click into editing families and all this good stuff. Now I have to remember, uh, close that one. No, we don't want to do that. Okay, here you go. So then you can edit and do all this good stuff. But that's where you're going to lay out your power. One more time before I leave. Views are under electrical. There are two types of views, guys. Um, there are two types of views. The sections are under these question marks. These are where you put all your section. When you put a section, they always show here. And the drafting views. What is the section? When you cut the building by half to see things. When when I use it? Coming. Drafting. What's a drafting? A black piece of paper that you need to draft on or bring things from CAD. So they're always under these question marks. Now, views. Views are, are views of a building already set for you. If you're doing lighting, you have two options. Either you're working on the floor plan or you're working on the ceiling. And I'm going to tell you when to, what to you, which one to use. If you're doing power, you only have one option, floor, floor, uh, um, floor power. Or floor if i want to create then we can create multiple sections i'll show you guys tomorrow how to create all these sections 3d if i need a view 3d view here's my 3d view of the building can you guys see how the building is going to look like 3d view um 3d view uh this is um um a 3d uh rendered you can render you can make color in it so that's your 3D views, sections, elevation sections. This is how the building is going to look in a, if you're looking at it from the east. Can you just see all the fixtures? Look at the, <laughs> they're lighted, the, the, look, can you just see where the light is going way up here? So they put the light wrong here. Can you just see that? That fixture is sitting way at the top. So you can tell they're not. They're not easily, they're not sitting, the fixtures are not sitting in the right location. That's what will happen to you too. Look at these fixtures are flying up in the air. They look beautiful when you're looking at it in 2Ds. In 3Ds, you can see all the all the problems they have in this project. If you look at from the north, um, here's how the north looks like. I don't know why that one looks like south. Okay, here you go. There you go. We're just, we're not far away. Okay, so here's how it looks from the uh, south, guys. Same thing. Uh, you, their fixture are put at the wrong wrong level. It will happen to you, believe me. Even though they look really nice when you look at them. Oh, my God. But look at 3D. 
um, if you look at it from the west, here's your building right in here with the trees and all this good stuff from the cars and and the fixture. Look at the fixture. <laughs> so um, let's see if we can uh, lower the fixture. Anyway, so this fixture, it's attached, so we need to do other things to do it. Okay, so these are the elevation. When you drop something, you might have to come and check, make sure it's it's sitting at the right elevation. Okay, summarize. You guys will have views, the electrical view and the mechanical. The electrical is the one that we're going to be working on. You're going to have uh, sheets. That's where all your sheets are going to be located. Also panels. Can you guys see the panels? Here's your panel schedule. In Revit, the minute that you put a panel, it's interactive. And it's uh, intelligent panels. So every panel have in, have electrical information in it. So if I click on MP, here's the schedule immediately for the MP panel. So it's not a drafting, guys. That's why they call it families. So when they ask you to put a panel, you physically go grab a panel that's made in 3D with electrical specification about it, not just 3D electrical specification what's the amps what's the voltage how many slots for the receptive for the uh, for the circuit pickers you need all built into that model when you grab it and put it in a model and sit it on a wall like this it will have a 3d dimension so you can look at it in 3d dimension to the manufacturer specification and you can look at the electrical component of it you double click on it it'll tell you what the voltage is what the how many phases how many circuit breakers how many amps so when you start circuiting math it's going to happen to you chad here's my panel i set the voltage everything is good now i'm going to circuit right all right circuit 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 and all of a sudden it doesn't allow you to circuit it's going to happen to you guys well chad is not allowing me to circuit you know why well you put 30 circuits in it and now you're up to 31. how are you going to put 31 circuits in a 30 circuit panel the Revit is intelligent enough. In CAD, does it care? Doesn't care. In CAD, it will tell you, hey, you're trying to circuit a 31 circuit into a 30, uh, 30 uh, circuit um, panel. Can't do that. So what do you need to do? You need to go back to your panel, up it, make it 40, and then you circuit again. You guys are going to face this one as, you, as you're doing it. So here's the schedules. These are your schedules. The last thing I'm going to show you guys in, in Revit is families. Families are so families are the symbols. So if you click where the bottom, of the, it tells you all the families that we have in this project. Families. What are families? Families are the symbols. So let's just say here's annotation, cable tray. Let's just do something. Electrical equipment. If you click under electrical equipment, it will tell you I have an annunciator panel and an auto transfer switch, diesel emergency power generator, dry type transformers, all the panels, lighting control panel, meter switch, all this good good stuff, electrical fixtures. I have my GFCI receptacles, standard receptacles. I have also junction boxes. I have motor switches. I have quads, quad receptacles, fire alarm devices. What are these? These are your symbols so-called families and rabbit guys they have to be families why they call them families not symbols because every time you pick one of these it it's an it, it's a smart uh, symbol basically it has a 3d with it with the with the symbol it has a 3d and electrical and mechanical specification so when you pick a receptacle you pick a box with it and a height and you also pick what voltage and what amps immediately when you pick that receptacle. So tomorrow, and as we move in through this week, guys, I will um, I will be showing you how to load families. What if I, what if my family is not here, Chad? What am I going to do? What if that that what I'm looking for is not there? What are you going to do? You're going to go import families. So I have families. Luckily, I have families for you guys, all the families that you need for you. What if you don't have a family? You got to create a family. 99% of the engineering firms at this point, guys, they already have their families created. 
they hired people like yourself to sit there for hours and hours and hours creating 3D boxes. That's what's his name, your friend um, Kurt. Kurt did that one at, uh, at um, Michelle Cooley, Erickson, and a bunch of other guys. They sat there, they hired them for hours to sit there and build families. So I need a generator. Okay, here's a box for a generator. Give me the quantities of all the electrical quantities. You start filling all the electrical quantities. We're not going to do building families. In, in a industrial project, I will talk about, we invite Mishat Kuli guys, one of their experts in Revit, and they'll walk you through how to do families and edit families and build families. For the time being, Karen, all what I'm requesting from you guys is to understand what families are, their symbols. They are intelligent symbols because they have 3D capabilities as well as electrical information built into them, how to use them, how to import them and load them into your project. That's what this, when you guys are done with this project, that's the goal is. You already have the families, import them, load them in the project and use them. Edit them, let's leave it for the next project. Okay, so don't work, don't mess around with editing. You have enough families to get you up and running. Learn how to use it first, <laughs> right? Any comments, guys, any questions? So these are all the families way at the bottom that you need um, before you do. I want to bring to your attention way at the bottom, you guys can see where it says Revit link. You guys can see that here's the architectural file that we're linking to. That's we're linking into an architectural file. That's how you bring the link that you bring your link. Okay, so summarize, you have your views, you have, uh, you have your schedules, and I'm skipping over other schedules, guys, is when you reach it. So the most important things is the views, that's the model space, the schedules, that's your panel schedule, the sheets, that's how you print the uh, paper space, the families, that's your symbols. We're not going to talk about groups, and the link is this is your XREF background. That's your extra background. Adam, sounds complicated, Chad. <laughs> a little bit complicated now. Do you guys you remember how you felt when we stuck with CAD? You felt lost and look at you, you delivered the whole project with it, right? Same thing is gonna happen with, with CAD. How do you eat an elephant? Two bites at a time or one bite? <laughs> if you're a Chad, two bites. <laughs> one bite at a time. So you remember we have 11 weeks to go through this project. We have a long time to go through it, step by step. You're looking at the, the uh, work of 11 weeks. I mean, you can't just digest it in one, in one half an hour or an hour. Any comments, guys, any questions? Any comments, any questions? So that's, um, that's what, what you're gonna do. I wanna bring to your attention, guys, when you open Revit, here, let me just go back. Um, uh to my view electrical view and let's go to uh power um let's go to site okay so click on site oh boy wow that's a mess here huh so let's do the power layout power here okay so these are the views that we're going to have um Let's use a, a different view here, this view, here you go. Okay, so when you open Revit, you're gonna see it says structural, architectural here because those guys lead us. Then you go structural. Are you the structural engineers and architects? No, so we're, what are we? Systems, when you go to systems guys, you're gonna find all the mechanical system as well. Can you guys see we're electrical here? Here's your electrical component. That's where we're going to spend a lot of time here. We have insert. I'll walk you through this one. This is how you import and export, import basically a link. Annotation, that's how you uh, tag things. Analyze, okay. Manage, collaborate. This is how you synchronize to a central file. Um, and again, we'll show you guys that one tomorrow. Um, when you come over here, they synchronize now. Can you see that? Synchronize now. That's how you synchronize with the project. The views, um, manage, modify. Um, so the most important thing probably is that one. I found it really cool. 
Um, so Derek, if you lose, can you just see how Revit is built out of this? I have a window here and a window here and a window here, three windows. That's where you're gonna be working. That's the property of what you're touching. And this is the interface that you have. All of these are called, here's the project browser. Here's the property and the project status. All these guys are right in here. So if you lose um, one of these, for example, click on this. Now I lost this. Can you guys see that? How am I going to get him back? You go to the interface here. Here's my browser. Click on my browser. It should bring it back, my browser. And I bring my property. Bring my property here. Brings it back. You want to bring it and put it right on this side here. Yep. You can adjust it. I like them right underneath each other. So you can bring them. If you lost them, you can bring them at any time. I like to put the property at the top. And you can bring them at any time. You can bring them, like I said, at any time. Uh, mechanical, electrical, fire alarm, data, communication, so forth. Okay, so that's how you bring um, your sub project browser. That's what we wanted to do, actually. My project browser is my project browser. And with the property underneath it. Okay. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Any comments? Any questions? Is that enough quick overview? Yeah, for the time, just overview. Now, do me a favor. For the coming an hour and a half or so, could you please do me a favor? Um, go ahead and open Revit if you want to and putz around with it and play with it. I don't want to walk you th today through your, your project Revit. Um, we'll leave it until tomorrow, so we'll open it. But go ahead and open it and putz around with it. It's already, don't save anything. Um, let me actually close that one and just show you one little thing if you want to open it. I want to close this project. Close this project. Uh, synchronize with central. I don't know if I can synchronize with central with that one. No, the model is not there. Okay, uh, file. Um, let's just save it. Okay, close. Close a uh, local file too. Okay, now, can you guys do this one with me? I don't want I just want you to open your file. Can you go open Revit? Do you know where to find Revit? Everybody knows how to find Revit. There should be one of your programs downloaded in your machine here. Autodesk, mine is already in, on the... Um, Autodesk here. Um, can you guys see to the start? Go Autodesk, and there should be Revit English right here. Do you have it as an icon? Do you guys have it on your um, what do you call the uh, desktop? Do you have it on the desktop? Okay, so you don't have to go there. Okay, when you go there, do me a favor. When you go open it until you reach this point, okay, and give me a thumbs up. Everybody's go okay. Now go to open. Can you guys see? The now, what I'm telling you is what you must do all the time because it's a central file. You're going to open it in this format. So go open. When you go open it, you're going to default to go to your desktop. Can you guys go to desktop, right? Now, in the, in your, at your desktop, you have a shortcut that take you to your team, uh, team folder. Do you guys have that one? Like mine, shortcut. Click on that one. It will take you to your team folder, wherever you are. Did you guys go to the team folder here? Okay. Now my team is team 11. So go, go to your team, open your team. Now right here, do you guys see where it says commercial project? Um, semester 3-2, commercial project, open this. Right underneath it, do you see where it says design? Right underneath it, you have two options. Hold your horses. You can go either architect or electrical. Architects is the extra. We don't want to mess with it. We're not architects, are we? We're going to go to electrical. ELEC is electrical. Click on electrical. When you go there, you're going to find two files. One file says backup, leave it alone. And the second one is central file. Click on this. Don't double click. Click on it. Just click. Are you guys all there? Anybody's not there? Karen, are we there? Did you deliver no time? Anybody? Okay, when you are there, does it say, is this box 
clicked, guys, here. It says detach from central. Don't click it. Is yours clicked? No? Should not be clicked. So this bind here, you don't want to click this bind. Detach from central means move it away from a central file. What is a central file? Do you guys know what a central file is? I don't think you know what a central file is. Imagine we have we're six of us. We're going to be working on a project, right? What you do is you have a central file putting right there. You're going to be working on it. So you go to the central file, take a copy of it, work on it. You're going to work on the same project, take a copy, work on it. When you're done with your work, synchronize what you have done with the central file. What does synchronize mean? Load all your work to the central file. Same thing, he will load all his work to the central file, and each one of us will load the work to the central file. By doing it this way, guys, you will have a centralized location for the project. Your architects, your mechanical, electrical, structural, supposedly could be working on the same project simultaneously with different permissions, with different permissions. Does everybody understand what a central file is? The reason why we have a central file is because we need to people simultaneously to work on aspects of the project. Simultaneously. When you guys were doing CAD with me, when you were in E4, do you think he can be in E4? Remember when I was in E4, what did it tell you? You can open a read only, right? I can't do anything. I read only. Here, I can open it and I can work. But if I touch something that you're working on, you know what happened? So to, to coordinate, what if you are working on this fixture and I want to touch that fixture? When I touch it, it will tell me, Adam is working on it. Ask him a permission to move it. It will tell you fixture by fixture, but I can go work on the other one though. You know what I mean? So it allows you to work on systems at the same time. Okay, do me a favor. When you're there, hit open, will you? Hit open. It says, I don't think it will tell you override existing. You don't have an existing, so... Um, now you're opening your central file. When you guys are done, give me a thumbs up, will you? Do you do you guys have a building? Does it show a building? Is that loading? I don't know why mine um I must have not loaded. I'm going to close that one and go just quick here. Uh, do not save. I'm going to go. I don't think the language all mine. I must have not loaded that one. Okay, let's go open. I'm doing that one more time for myself. Went to this team. Hmm, interesting. Uh, let's go to team. team. I'm going to go to team five. That will be uh, Brian. I want to go open your, Brian, open your stuff, Brian, here. Um, okay, I think I did that one. Electrical, TM. Okay, here you go. I just didn't override existing. Now, Brian and I are working on the same sheet. Brian, you're in, right? Yeah. Yep. I'm opening the same thing, Brian, because I have a permission to open it. Now, we're looking at the same, we should be looking at the same thing. Okay. Are you guys, can you see this? Everybody can see this? Now it's loading. Now remember, with this, we have hardwired guys that we are, you're working online with 3D model. It might it slow down at one time. So you can, there's a bunch, bunch of cables there. Feel free to plug yourself. It never been an issue with the number of the students that we have, five of you guys, not a big deal. When we have 20 and 25, it, it becomes really slow. So we wire ourselves. So it takes a second to load the system. I want to wait for you guys until you tell me that everybody's looking. Adam, you're in? No. Still, still loading? Nobody's in? Okay. And you know what? It takes, it takes a few seconds, guys, because you're opening Revit for the first time, too. Wow, how come that my computer is faster than yours, guys? Uh, maximize this, go here. Okay, can you guys see that? Everybody can see that. Can you guys go, everybody can see three windows. 
the window where the building is located right here, and also the project browser window here, as well as the property. Can you have a thumbs up that all of you can see that? Do me a favor, go minimize this, minimize this one you can, right here. Can you guys see minimize? So that's where I was talking about the views under electrical views. Can you guys see that? Then you have the schedules. Do you see anything under sheets? Sheet all, do you see anything? No, that's what we're gonna do tomorrow. We're gonna build the sheets right here. Do you guys see the families? These are all the families that have been loaded for you under families. And if you guys um, expand this one a little bit, the link, this is the architectural model that has been linked to your project. I want you guys to assure me a couple of things. Number one, Chad, we know where the views are under electrical right here. And you're looking at this view here. And then if you go under uh, sheets, we have no sheets. Uh, all the families are here and the link at the bottom. These are the most important thing guys that you're gonna um, you're gonna see from this project browser. <clears throat> cool. Everybody can see that. Now under the views, so what, what we'll do tomorrow, guys, right here, I'm gonna be right under the sheets. I'm gonna right click on it and start the sheet, and I don't want to do it today. I need your full undivided attention tomorrow. Okay, views. Can you just see um go under electrical? You're going to find, minimize these. Can you guys see how when you minimize it, you're going to find um, electrical. We have lighting and we have power. We have lighting um, and we have power. So when we're doing lighting, we're going to do under lighting. We're doing power. We'll do under power. If you go to the 3D view and click on the 3D view, it will show you a 3D view of the building. Can you guys see we say power 3D view? Can you guys can you give me a thumbs up if you are able to double click on it to see the 3D view of the building? Okay, good. Um, now go back to under floor. Click on floor one. Click on floor one and tell me what you can see. Double click on floor one. Double click on floor two. Do you guys see this this view of floor two and floor one? All right? You guys see that? Okay. Now, what does that mean? They're looking at different elevation of these views. So that's under power, minimize the power. Let's go under lighting. Under lighting, there's ceiling. Go to ceiling one, one ceiling electrical. That's your ceiling. Go to ceiling two. That's what you see for ceiling two, not a whole lot. So ceiling one is what we're gonna be working on. Go to lighting, floor plan lighting. Here's what you're gonna see for the first one and for the second one. Do you guys see the views look different? You know what views are? Views are okay, Chad. Here's a building. Do I want to, when I want to look, do I want to look to see up to 12 feet or 15 feet? So if you go 15 feet, if you go right in this 12 foot ceiling, if you go 15, you wouldn't be able to see the lights because the lights are above. The, the 15 feet is looking above it. So depending on how high you do your views, you will be able to see certain things, but not others. That's what the views are. These are already designed views for you to use. I will show you how to change them when needed. Okay, so that's what I wanna just run with you for, for these. Um, I would like you guys to go to architectural here. When you hit, let's just, um, let's just put ourselves in uh, view, this view. Can you guys go to electrical lighting, floor plan, so you can see this view, okay? Now, if you are under architectural tab, can you just see that? This means these are all, if you want to build a wall or have a door or a window, you can actually build doors and windows and be an architect. Can you just see that? Um, obviously, we're not here to be architects, so we're not going to be using this one a lot. Structural, if you want to build the truss and the braces and the beams for the building, you're going to be right here. Are we building beams and trusses for this building? No. I want to remind you this software is for multidiscipline, for architects, structural engineers, mechanical engineers, and electrical. Who are we? We're the electrical. So we're going to be interested not in architectural now, not in the structural now. We're going to be interested in systems. They call us systems. <laughs> Get used to it. Systems means mechanical and electrical. Cool. Where are the systems? 
So look at these old ducts and so forth. These are mechanical systems. Move all the way until you see electrical. Can you guys click on electrical? Not click, just highlight it. Do you see what you see here? You see lights, you see receptacles, you see equipment, you see conduits, you see cable trays, parallel runs, cable trays, and wires. You're going to spend a lot of time right in here. That's how you bring your families into the project. Your families into the project. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We fully understand that we go to systems and electrical when we're working because we're not architects and we're not structural engineers. Cool. Now, um, insert. Insert, can you guys see the one? So we're going to spend a lot of time on the systems. Insert, what is insert? When you do link, when you link a, a Revit file to another Revit file, you do it under insert. Also, when you want to import CAD file, so you did a great detailing CAD. You could do the same thing in Revit. And you really don't want to repeat yourself in Revit. You can go insert, import your CAD stuff, and put it into Revit. Can I have your attention, guys, for a second? Insert is so important for you. Anything that you have done, for example, the detail that you have done, you say in the residential project, you want to bring it to this project because you don't want to do it again, right? The first thing you do, go insert, go to that detail, and import that CAD into Revit. So, so important. So we're going to import a lot of stuff. Annotate. Annotate if you want to assign a panel and a circuit number to a receptacle. Remember how we reset RP1, RP1 and 55, circuit 55, receptacle panel? That's how we're going to do it under annotate. Annotate tags, basically, tagging the equipment. Analyze, we're not going to do a lot of stuff with analysis here. Go all the way to collaborate. Can you guys see collaborate here? When you collaborate, do me a favor, click under synchronize and synchronize now and see what happened. Click synchronize to with central, synchronize now. Were you guys able to synchronize? One more time, collaborate, synchronize, synchronize now. Did you guys all click it? It's cooking, cooking. What does that mean? You are opening your own file, but I, um, Brian and I are looking at the same file. When I'm done with my work, when you're done with your work, it will tell you, do you want to, when you try to exit, it's before you exit, you must go and synchronize. By the way, if you don't, it will ask you, do you want to synchronize? Always synchronize. What does synchronize means? Everything that you have done, load it all the way up to the central file so other people can see it that's all um now what happened if brian wants to see what i'm doing right now he has to go to reload because both of us are working on the same i'm going to go reload here and if brian is missing there are no new changes to load so if brian and i are working on the same project and simultaneously, and I want to see where the heck is he now. I go reload, and we reload all his stuff. Did you guys hear me? The difference between reload, reloading the new stuff, synchronize, loading your new stuff to the to the central file. Views. When it comes to views here, any question guys about collaborate? You're going to be using this software for two projects, so get used to collaborate and synchronize. Reload, get uh, everything new from the central file. For you guys, since you're only a, a man or a woman, a project doesn't make much unless I go there and mess up with your stuff. But if you're working in a team, reload latest and synchronize. That's how you cooperate with others in the same project. View, view guys, very important. I can have a 3D section, a section view. I can have a drafting view, any of these views. Um, I have a, a 3D default view. I can have a section view here. Uh, that's how you get any view that you want. Uh, typically, the section view, we use it a lot here. Um, and the drafting view, uh, which view template. OK. Um, so that's where you get your views, the views. Manage. Manage, what did we do in the manage? We'll do a couple of things tomorrow on manage. Modify, that's how you modify things. You cut and, and what's not. When you go to view, guys, go back to view, will you? 
for view, I told you if you are to lose any, like I lost these, right? I'm losing this stuff, right? I lost all my stuff. I need to bring it back, go to view, user interface. You need the system, you need the project browser first. That's this thing. And you need the details. Where is my property or details? You need this thing. So that's what you, at least you need these two. Can you guys see that? You can bring other things like system browser. Is your system browser too? Um, so uh, typically what you need is um, property and project browser. So here's my project browser and here's the properties. Cool. So if you are to lose that one, I want to bring to your attention, guys, this is like CAD. See how many files I'm, I'm putting in here? Every time you click on something, you are opening a file. I'm going to close this one and show you how many files I'm opening. Can you guys see that? Everybody can see that? How many files? So make sure, you know, um, every time you click on one view, it will open it and keep it in the background. It will open it and keep it in the background. Okay? So we'll open that view, keep it in the background. One more time, I'm going to go my uh, property and my system browser, my project browser. So I can go into whatever view I want. So I'm going to close this view here. I have no views here. Oops, I close the project. Um, open one more time. Okay, override existing. Anyway, so that's how you open multiple views and close multiple views and so forth and don't close a project like I did. Okay. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Repeat. We are, it defaults to architectural, structural next to it. System is where you need to be. Systems and electrical. That's where you need to be. Insert can get you CAD files into Revit and linking. Annotation can get you the tags next to your equipments and receptacles. You're going to see us doing it. Analyze collagen detection and boundaries and so forth. I didn't use it a whole lot. Collaborate. This is where we're going to synchronize with Central and reload. And so it says relinquish mine, guys. Every time you touch something in Revit, it assigns you to that thing. So if you touch that fixture, I can't move it without your permission. So if you want me to move it, go relinquish all mine rights so other people can touch it. You do this one typically when you leave the project. Views, we looked at the views, guys, the section and so forth. Um, and uh, manage, I'll say a few things about manage. So that's basically it. I'm going to walk you guys through it. Um, project browser and property. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Comments, questions? Are you guys ready to hit the ground running tomorrow? So for the time being, if you want to go putz around, you're not going to destroy anything. Feel free to room around and monkey around. Do me a favor. Make sure you read the narrative before Halberg comes tomorrow so we can, uh, you, can you know at least what they're talking about. Okay? That's all I have for you guys. Thank you.